I would like to now introduce the folks that we have here from the town of Monument. Um, I will say that Mike Foreman is the town manager and he apologized. He was here earlier, but he had a scoot to another meeting. Uh, we also have Sheila Booth down in the front. Sheila is the planning director for the town of Monument. And we have Greg Heinzel is in the back. He is the project manager for Jackson Creek Parkway for the town of Monument. And at the table up front, we have Steve Murray. He is with the design engineering firm of FHU. Uh, he's contracted by the town to do the Jackson Creek Parkway project. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Steve. Great, thank you, Lisa. First off, I would like to thank everybody for showing up tonight. It's great to have your participation and your input on these projects. So thank you very much. Uh, and with that, let's get started on the Jackson Creek Parkway presentation. I'll talk a little bit. Oh, higher volume. Yes. Let's see. We have a mic that is right here. I'll see if I can get it closer to me. Is this uh, is that better? Is that better? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, that's oh, OK. So I'm just going to have to really speak up. Yeah. I got you. I got you. OK, well, this is for the folks online. So now I've just broken their eardrums. <laughs> I mentioned that if he had another microphone for the speaker on stage, it would cause feedback with those online. So we will just have I'll do my best. So I will do my best to speak up. Is that volume? Uh, is that better? Yeah. OK, thank you so much. I will project. I'll do my best. So I will be talking about the schedule here, kind of where we're at in the project, and then, and then I'll talk a little bit about the Jackson Creek Parkway. After me, uh, Corey Beasley up here with my uh, cohort in crime up here will uh, then be talking about uh, 105. And so we'll just progress through that way. So starting with Jackson Creek Parkway, uh, we've gone through a three phase project. So we kind of have this ready, set, go. Uh, we're through the ready phase, which gets us to a preliminary design. So we've taken a look at all the data collection. And so as you look at the schedule, you can't read this, but all of this phase under ready is really data collection and analysis and, and what it is that we need to build in the corridor. And then what we do is we take all that data and we move it forward to a preliminary design phase right about here. And that's, that's right where we're at. Construction is go time. And so we're about, $8 million short of go. <laughs> and so we're still trying to raise some money and Sheila is working tirelessly trying to get that money. And so we're trying to help her where we can. And once the project is fully funded, then we will be able to go to construction. We expect that, I'll cover that a little bit later in the presentation, but that'll be happening right around 2024 is what we're hoping for. All of the dates that I'm gonna be talking about are our best projection. There's a lot that happens that we can't predict. Our crystal ball is about as clear as yours. And so uh, as we give you the dates, we're just trying to give you our best guesses. Is my voice still in the right spot? Okay, good. And so that's, that's kind of where we stand right now. And so um, we are looking uh, by uh, the very beginning of 2024, having taking preliminary plans and moving it forward to then final design right there. And then once we have that, and we have our funding, then we kick right into the construction phase. Uh, 105, uh, they're right here <laughs> on their first phase. So uh, we're a little bit behind them. All right, so what does the project look like today? Today, we know that Jackson Creek Parkway goes north all the way to Higby, and it goes from a four-lane section and then next down to what you see here on the screen. And our project is intended to then provide some, some widening in this area, and we want to continue these lanes uh, all the way north. So you have a four-lane section all the way through. Today, uh, you have a signalized intersection at Higby, one at the YMCA, and then one at 105. And so we have those three signals. We're looking to add one more uh, in the proposed phase. Now, there might be one addition to that. It depends on the development that's going on. And so we're really trying to facilitate the wonderful growth, if you look at it that way, in the town of Monument and, uh, and whatever, whatever access the town of Monument would like to provide so that it can be a thriving community. 
And so with that, uh, the roadway section is gonna look a little bit more like this, where we have four lanes all the way through, we're accommodating bike lanes and we're accommodating uh, sidewalks. And this, well, I'll go back to that. I was thinking I was at my cross section, but this will accommodate bike lanes, sidewalks on both sides. It'll have underground storm sewers. So you won't have the flooding that you saw in this last event going through the YMCA signal. Uh, and and this will this will help all of that traffic that this new development and growth is generating to get through. And also, the town of Monument is, is very interested in beautifying this area so that it kind of sets the town of Monument apart. And so we're looking to uh, add some really nice aesthetic elements within the median so that uh, so it's a nice experience as you're driving through. So the four signalized intersections I was talking about, uh, you have one here, once again, the you've got the 105 intersection with Jackson Creek Parkway, you have Higby, you have the YMCA, those are existing today. And then you have another one uh, right here that is going into the development that Classic is building right now. And that will be signalized the minute it meets warrants. And so that with the traffic volumes, it has to meet traffic warrants and then you're able to signalize it. So that's what's planned as of now. Uh, there could be some additional signals that are going on down closer to the YMCA, depending on how that develops. And so that's something that we're working very closely with, with the town of Monument and, and developers as we move forward. And that will be defined in the future. It's an unknown to me right now because I don't have a, a approved development plan. Now, I was talking about the cross section. And so we mentioned sidewalks, bike lanes. Uh, there are four lanes of travel. They're narrower. Normally, you have a 12-foot lane. We're narrowing these down to 11-foot lanes. We have a, a raised median in the center. And we have, again, bike lanes and sidewalks on the outside. Uh, we have schools in this area. We're wanting to have a slower speed corridor. We want it to move traffic. We don't want to impede mobility, but we also want to have a safer uh, environment as we're moving through. And so the speed limit will be closer to 30 miles an hour. Uh, you're you're going to see vehicles that are traveling 30 to 35, but by narrowing the lanes, that has a slowing effect. The raised medians, the curb and gutter, that also provides a little bit more of a slowed atmosphere as you're driving through. So, um, so we're hoping to, to create that kind of an environment, kind of a, almost a, a parkway as you're, as you're coming through. And last but not least, uh, we've got, you'll see dark sky with the lighting. If you go south of Higby, the lights there, I think also considered dark sky, but this is going to be even more so. We're, we're hoping that uh, as the as the residents are looking out at the mountains at the night sky, they're not having the light shining into uh, their eyes as they're doing so. So we're really trying to focus on that and be conscientious of that. All right. I mentioned uh, kind of a beautified landscape. So uh, Cassie with the Town of Monument has done a fantastic job in creating this design concept with the median. And uh, I really think it's gonna be something special. Mike Foreman is wanting to create some nodal elements kind of closer to Higby as you're coming in where you know you've entered into the town of Monument. I think that's his goal. He wants it to be special. And so, uh, so they're definitely gonna be investing in landscape in the median, along with that dark sky lighting. So this is where we kind of get to these, uh, these construction projects. As we mentioned, this is a highly collaborative effort where we have, uh, we have um, the, the El Paso County, we have Classic, we have, our project with the Town of Monument, and then you have Triview Metropolitan District going through as, here as well. It's a little bit confusing with the orientation. Keep your eye on where north is. So north is going this direction, uh, and, and 105 is here. So 105 is our front runner. They're gonna start construction first. And so they're, they've got bids right now, and they are looking to get going. And then Classic is gonna do some interim improvements uh, up here, uh, right in this area to support four, uh, well, two developments that are coming in. Uh, and I think they have four different parcels, I thought I heard Steve say, and that's gonna be coming in soon. So they're providing some turn lanes to accommodate that development. And you're gonna see this uh, within the next month. And uh, we'll hear from the 105 team on when that construction is starting, uh, but that's starting very soon. And then moving on to this, 
to the detail. I showed you 105 and I showed you the interim improvements. So this is, this is a slide showing you some of these interim improvements. So there's gonna be some widening uh, and there's gonna be some intersection, intersection improvements at Fat Tire. Um, there'll be some access here at Lapping Lab and that will all then taper uh, taper on out. So all of this yellow is gonna be constructed in the, just the next months. So it's gonna be happening rather soon. And then, uh, and then getting into detail then on the 105, you can see that is their project limits. Now you'll notice that the uh, north arrow is facing up. So now we're looking north this way and 105 goes from Jackson Creek all the way over to here. We'll get some more detail from that from Corey on that. Okay, so now looking at the next timeline, this is this is starting in Q4 of 2023 and running to 2026. And this, this portion now brings all of these projects to the ultimate. 105 will be completed uh, and it'll be in its ultimate form. Uh, but then we still need to go, instead of the interim improvements that we did with Classic, now we're doing the ultimate improvements. So that's that section that I showed you with all four lanes. And so now this is get, getting finalized. The only thing holding this up right now is permitting with CDOT and uh, making sure that all, all the permits that Classic needs to construct this are in place. But they're anticipating to start this in Q1 of 2024, this gray section. The blue section is my project. And that's where I'm gonna come in right after Classic and be one seamless project all the way through if we can get funding. And so that's the one thing that I'm not sure about. And so if we are able to get funding, then this will be a seamless project all the way through and you'll have four lanes uh, to support all the growth in the area. So that's the intention, that's what we intend to do. And then, uh, and then you've got this section, which is being constructed by Triview Metropolitan District. And, uh, and this is happening, let me see, I gotta look at my slide here. That one is, is gonna be happening in Q4 of 2023 as well. So, so the construction that's happening here and the construction that's happening here is basically Q4 of 2023. Our project will follow that in Q3 of 2024. That's our best guess. So again, uh, you can hold me to it, but my crystal ball is about as good as yours. So looking into a little bit more detail, again, North is now up. We've got Higby improvements. This is what Triview will be constructing. This is our Q4 2023, should end in 2025. And this is where uh, Classic is going to be building the final improvements along Jackson Creek Parkway at 105. So now this signalized intersection with permitting from CDOT and the county, this is all ready to go. This will start construction Q1 of 2024. If our project is not ready, then they would taper their lanes all the way back here to tie into existing. If my project is ready, then we would tie in about at this dashed line and the full construction would just continue on. So that's, that's how we're looking at it. And then this is both projects combined uh, where you have our FHU portion here for the town of Monument and then classics portion. This we're anticipating Q3 2024. Uh, initiating, and then this will complete at the end of 2026, where we have all four lanes in. And with that, that is our best look ahead, and I appreciate your attention. I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Lisa, and then Lisa can introduce the 105 team. Great, thank you. All right, thank you, Steve. I want to mention, I know these maps are real hard to see here, but if you go on the website, the Jackson Creek Parkway website, all those maps are on there. Click on the map and it'll it'll get big. You can zoom in on it and see it in detail. Uh, we don't have the Higby map yet, but you know, as we get that, we will add that to the Jackson Creek, Creek website as well. Um, so now I'm going to move on to um, the 105 project, the El Paso County project. But before I do, I want to introduce the folks that are here from El Paso County. So we've got down in front of me, Josh Homer, if you'd raise your hand. Josh is the Public Works Director. Of the Software. Alyssa is the Project Manager on this project. And Ted Gerenson, there's way over there. Ted is the Construction Manager. 
And then last but not least, we have Corey Beasley. Corey is with HDR. They're the uh, design firm on the 105 uh, project. But um, I want to mention more for Corey than anything. Keep in mind that those online are not able to see your laser pointer. Okay. So you'll have to describe what you're what you're pointing to in detail, if you would, and speak loudly for this group. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the best I can. We'll see if my third grade teacher is right. I got a part in a play because I was the loudest one. So let's see if that's true or not. So thank you, Lisa. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for taking the time to listen about the project. Like Lisa said, I'm uh, the lead design for the Highway 105 Project A. Thank you. Appreciate the, the nod. Um, and what we're looking to do today is just talk about the process and where we're at with the project and, and go from there. So let me make sure I get the right button. Maybe. There we go. Okay, it's a delay. Is it okay? Maybe. Let me hit the wrong button. That's why. There we go. Okay, that takes a minute. So once again, 105 Project A. Uh, Steve mentioned we're we're a little farther ahead. Um, this project currently was uh, developed to improve the capacity for the growing town and monument, as well as the area and residents around it. Um, we are adding additional lanes for Highway 105. Currently, what you're seeing through this area is uh, two single lanes. We're going to uh, double that up to two lanes each direction. Um, the other aspect of this project is also to maintain the traffic speed. Again, this is an urban arterial road. Um, again, to maintain that traffic speed is, is one of the uh, elements of keeping the capacity up and make, being able to handle the increased traffic flow uh, through this corridor. Project funding, currently it's been funded by uh, federal dollars as well as the Pikes Peak Rural Transportation Authority, also called PPRTA. Again, fully funded and ready for construction. Uh, we have completed final design. We are in the process of the bid for the project. Uh, we actually just received bids today from contractors, so we will start to evaluate that and then move into uh, awarding the contract hopefully uh, in the next month or so. Uh, from there, then it's on to the contractor to develop the schedule of, of how quickly they can uh, get the project going. There are some elements of the project that we are asking them to do first, and I'll explain that as we go through the project. Um, again, project uh, anticipation for this summer and completed uh, roughly about two years later um, in 2025. Um, what you're seeing on screen now, and for those online, is the uh, western half of the project. I've broken this out into thirds, so we're going from almost kind of intersection to intersection, and I'll kind of explain some of the highlights of each of those areas. Um, the beginning of the project will start just to the uh, east of the I-25 on off ramp, which you'll see labeled on the drawing. And what we're starting with is some additional sidewalks. So right now, um, there's sidewalk um, currently on the seat out right away. Uh, across from the ramp, and we're going to continue that sidewalk all the way through until you get down to the Knollwood intersection. From there, um, we will begin the widening portion of the project. Um, we are again going from the single lane each direction and matching what's currently uh, further to the west, which is two lanes in each direction, and widening it out so that the entire corridor through up until Lake Woodmore is two lanes each direction. Um, from there, we have also increased, added a um, acceleration lane along Highway 105. So this is going to be for the traffic heading southbound on Noblewood and trying to uh, head west onto Highway 105. We have also included a water quality pond and detention pond. Again, as part of any uh, road widening or road improvement project, uh, main objective is to make sure that drainage uh, water quality has been maintained during um, the, the use of the road. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to maintain traffic speeds through the uh, highly traveled uh, arterial corridor. Uh, this is kind of more of a zoomed in of uh, the Nowood intersection. Uh, what you're going to see in this is the uh, addition of a roundabout. And what that uh, objective for that one to do is to help with the efficiency of the intersection as it stands today, which is a stop condition. So what that does is it allows more access for vehicles to travel as well as reduce the amount of conflict points that a stop intersection would have. Um, from there, uh, what we're trying to do or what the roundabout does is help to efficiently and safely allow traffic to um, make its way through. Again, this would allow traffic back onto the private drive 
um, Village Ridge Point, and then continued the traffic to the north uh, along Knollwood. Um, the objective here well as well with the stop condition is to alleviate the queuing that happens. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more of that here further down the discussion, um, but that's what the objective is without a stop sign condition and reduced conflict points. Um, as with um, the sidewalk additions that I mentioned before, we're also trying to improve the pedestrian access. So a sidewalk has been uh, maintained through this uh, section uh, to the Integrity Bank, which is uh, just to the east of the roundabout. Uh, as I mentioned before, again, uh, improved drainage throughout the entire corridor and the same goes for this location. You'll see um, when you, if you're looking and if you're looking online, um, these lines with triangles attached to them are the storm sewer system uh, that will help with drainage and um, the uh, rainfall and making sure that uh, it's a safe road to travel. Uh, you'll see another addition of some more drainage features here along Millwood intersection. Um, uh, lastly, uh, one thing to keep in mind as we're going through this process is once construction is completed, the plan is to work with uh, a pastor county will work with uh, the town and uh, CDOT as well for the improvement of uh, intersection um, timing. Again, as traffic starts to get used to the uh, intersection, um, we'll make sure that that is efficiently and effectively uh, updated to, to time it out uh, as best we can. As we move further to the east, um, we're kind of more in the middle section of the project. Uh, so again, Knollwood and the Integrity Bank is here on your west. Uh, Morning Canyon Road is here on your uh, east or on the right there. And what you're seeing here is again, maintained sidewalk along the south side of Highway 105. Sidewalk's there today. Sidewalk will be there when the project's complete up until Morning Canyon Road. Uh, you will see some uh, additional features uh, including Monument Academy wall. Um, there is an existing wall along Monument Academy. Um, we're kind of removed, well, I shouldn't say kind of, we will remove that wall and it'll be combined into one larger wall uh, to handle the widening of the road. Uh, this will help with the additional phasing for the Monument Academy project, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, we will be continuing four lanes of traffic, both, or excuse me, four lanes of traffic to each direction um improve drainage as well as maintaining current traffic speeds uh one element i do want to take a step back and talk about and for those online i apologize i'll, I'll describe it as best i can um part of the the project evaluation and, and moving through is the monument academy um, school access um so what's going to happen um in in the near future and actually as we start this week is construction behind the school um, what we're doing is an added access lane that goes beyond the limits on my screen right now, but this access lane will allow for additional queuing or vehicles to be um, queued up on the school grounds instead of along Highway 105, which you might see today. I say today, but school's out, but uh, during the school year. Um, so again, the, the objective of that additional lane is additional lane for the cars to be st uh, staggered and stacked on the school property for pickup and drop off instead of along Highway 105. And what the objective of that as well is um, the length of that road will alleviate the uh, backup traffic through this uh, area, uh, which is causing some of the uh, traffic issues at Knollwood uh, today. Uh, another aspect of that project is the closure of the access between the church and the school. Um, this will be closed, not necessarily physically, but more for emergency access only, but traveling public, there'll be a gate, they won't be able to use it. Um, so the church uh, maintains their uh, current access as it stands today. But again, that queuing traffic uh, will be looped through the school property uh, coming in and then heading back out. Uh, and the last, uh, the easternmost part of the project, um, this is where we're going to be transitioning back to existing condition. Lake Woodmore is the, the terminus of the project um, where we're ending it and the continuing project, which I'll talk about here in a second, will, will um, continue the widening of 105 under a future project. But for project A, we are ending the, the two lane section here and transitioning from a two lane down to a single lane just to match up with the existing traffic or existing um, 
traffic layout or typical section of the road there to the east. Um, a couple features that you're going to see on here as well. Uh, there is a retaining wall. Um, part of the reason for the retaining wall is uh, this is a uh, mitigated property for the Preble's uh, jumping mouse. So for those reasons, a retaining wall was put in place to allow the widening, but also protect the Preble's mouse. A guardrail is also placed in this area uh, to protect traffic from that uh, retaining wall um, as well as part of that widening. Um, we are along Lake Woodmore Drive adding a right turn lane southbound. Um, that would be, uh, you can kind of maybe see it here in the little blow up section, that right turn lane will add, allow for uh, additional right turn only and left turn only uh, separation of traffic. Uh, and just like the rest of the quarter, you'll see improved drainage along here. Um, we've worked closely with the county to make sure we're accommodating any existing drainage concerns. Um, so we've added some additional features and outlet and outfall areas to back into Dirty Woman Creek, which runs through this area. Um, the work you see here uh, just past Lake Woodmore Drive to the west is part of a future project. So that's Project B. Again, we're focusing today on Project A. Future B is currently in design, and we are looking at uh, aiming for uh, anticipated construction schedule of hopefully early 2025. Um, again, that will help to widen and improve the capacity of Highway 105 from Lake Woodmore all the way out to Martindale. So again, just to kind of cover some additional projects that are in the area, uh, I'd mentioned before the Monument Academy Recirculation Project, the access lane behind the school grounds. Uh, that construction um, has started. They uh, actually started Monday uh, this week. So the goal and objective is to get that uh, back queuing lane, we'll call it phase one, um, completed before school starts in August um, to help with that traffic. There is a future phase two, which will come in front of the school, which is incorporated into the new wall that we're building along Highway 105 to also help alleviate for future growth potential of the school. Um, uh, as Steve had mentioned before, there's some additional uh, development projects that are happening. Uh, the Jackson Creek Parkway um, intersection interim project, uh, the also final condition project, uh, as part of this project, um, we worked extensively with the local utilities that run through this corridor. And so what you'll start to see is some utility improvement projects. Um, some of those include Mountain View Electric, uh, Woodmore Water and Sanitation, just to name a couple. But you'll start seeing some of that work happening, uh, especially as we look at the school property and, and those uh, locations in front of the school for that wall. Um, again, I mentioned before, Highway 105 Project B. Uh, under design and uh, anticipated for 2025. Um, and then the Town of Monument Jackson Creek Parkway widening project with construction anticipated third quarter of 2024 into 2026. Um, I, again, can't uh, help Earth, but appreciate your patience with all this stuff. We are trying to work closely together. Steve, as I said, we're, we're working closely on just making sure that our projects are intertwined to make the construction phasing, um, to alleviate as much headache as you're going to get. I can't promise you're not going to have some headaches with it, but at the same time, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work as best we can with the contractors. 